Hello guys, once more. So today I'm going to show you how to form the conditionals in English. Okay, so first of all, let's start with the zero conditional. Now, the zero conditional. Now, what we use the zero conditional for? Rules, things that always apply, general truths. Okay, how do we form the zero conditional? Now, in the if clause, oops, give me one minute, I'll locate it because I have three languages here. Okay, in the if clause, we have the simple present tense. Okay, and then in the main clause, we have simple present. Now, I'll give you an example. If you boil water, that's the example that always comes up. <laughs> if you boil water, it evaporates. Okay, so that's the if sentence. Okay, what we have in the if sentence is boil, simple present, okay, like here. And then in the main clause, in the main sentence, we have it evaporates, which is also simple present. Okay, so that's the zero conditional. If you press the button, your phone turns on. If you press the button, it turns on. Okay, that's a rule again. So that's how we use the zero conditional. Now, let's move on to the first conditional. Now, the first conditional is used in order to talk about things that are true at present or in the future. Okay, situations. that are true at the present moment or in the future. Okay, now how do we form the first conditional? In the if sentence, in the if clause, we have again simple present. Okay, in the main clause, we may have a variety of things. We could have future will. We could have um, modal verbs plus um, infinitive. Or we could even have imperative. Now, I will make an example with each and every one. Okay, I will form an example here for you. Now, let's take the first one. If plus simple present, okay. In the other sentence, we're going to have future, will, or modal, okay. Plus infinitive or imperative, okay. Now, let's take the first one. So we have if, um, if I have time tomorrow, I will pay you a visit, pay a visit, visit someone. So we noticed that in the if sentence we have have, which is simple present. Okay. And then in the other sentence we have future with the verb will. I will pay you a visit. Okay. And that's the first case, future will. Now let's take the second one. We say, if I have time tomorrow, I may call you. I'm not sure, I may call you. May is a modal verb. And we notice that after the modal verb, what we have is an infinitive. Okay, so what happened? In this case, we have have here, simple present. And here I have may plus infinitive. Okay. And let's form a last example with uh, imperative. Okay, the imperative form. So I say, if you have time tomorrow, call me. That's an imperative. It's an order. Okay. So what I do have now 
is simple present here, if you have time, and imperative here. The imperative is the form which takes no pronoun at the front. Go, call, open. Okay. You don't need a pronoun like I, you, he. Okay. That's all. So this is the zero conditional once more. That's the first conditional. So now let's move on to the second conditional. Now, the second conditional is used in order to talk about something um, impossible at the present moment or in the future. How do we form it? In the if clause, in the if sentence, we have simple past this time. And then in the main clause, uh, we have would plus infinitive or alternatively modal plus oops here plus infinity and I'll give you an example right away okay so if I were you I would study more okay so here, where is simple past, okay, that's it here, where, I would study more, would plus infinitive, in this case, okay. Now, alternatively, if I had more money, I could go traveling, I could go on a trip, okay. So now again, in this case, had is the simple past as here. And here we have could plus infinitive. Could is a modal verb. Okay, it takes infinitive. Now, um, third conditional. We use the third conditional to talk about something impossible in the past. Well, the past has happened, so there's no way to change it. So, okay, how do we form it? If plus past perfect simple, past perfect, could be continuous. Uh, in the main clause, we have would have plus past participle. Okay, and alternatively, we could have if plus past perfect modal have plus past participle. Okay, I'll give you an example right away. So we say, if I had been in town yesterday, I would have visited you. Okay, I wasn't in town, so I didn't visit you. Now I regret it. <laughs> so, but I say, if I had been in town yesterday, I would have visited you. Or instead of saying I would have visited you, I might use I could have visited you. Okay, alternatively. Now, that's the third conditional. I'll take some time to show you how we can make inversion in order to give emphasis using the conditionals. Okay. Now, in the first conditional, first conditional, in the zero conditional, we don't actually have inversion, but in the first one, we could have inversion in case we used in the if clause the model should. If you should. Um, give me one minute because I mixed it. So, if you should. Uh, pay more attention you will understand everything better now how can I turn this sentence into inversion to give emphasis 
Well, what I can do is I can totally erase the if word. Okay. And the next thing I can do is take this modal should and put it at the front here. So what I'm left with is should you pay more attention? Should you pay more attention? You will understand everything better. Okay. And that's inversion with the first conditional. Now, let's see that how we can invert using the second conditional. Now, uh, we can invert whenever we have the word where. So, if I were younger, I would go skiing. Okay, now, how can I turn this into inversion? Well, once again, uh, what I can do is erase if, okay, and then take this where word, uh, verb, and put it at the front, in front of the pronoun I. So what I'm left with is where I younger, I would go skiing, okay. Now, one last thing, third conditional, I'll put it here. Now, we said earlier, if I had been in town, I would have come to your party, okay? Now, in order to uh, make this sentence, um, to turn this sentence into an inversion, what you have to do again is remove the if word and invert had I been in town, I would have come to your party. Okay, so this means that we can uh, use inversion in all sentences, whereas here we can only invert whenever we have the verb be. Okay, where? Well, guys, that's all. Uh, one more thing I forgot to mention was the fact that I can have mixed conditionals, but we will see that at a later video. So for the time being, I hope I helped you a little bit revise the conditionals. Till next time, take care.